Greetings, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. Behind me is Mrs. Gaskell's birthplace. If that truck would kindly move out of the way. Um, anyway, this is where uh, Elizabeth Gaskell was born in 1810. She's uh, always known as um, Mrs. Gaskell, not by her name. So, her father had been a Unitarian minister who had um, left the church when he felt he no longer believed in that particular kind of Protestantism. He's there, where it's above this door, that's his room, that black house, black door of his house. Um, and in somewhere in northern England, yeah, Berwick upon Tweed, on the, the border with Scotland. Anyhow, he shifted here to London. Uh, he was thought to be going to go be secretary to uh, the Viceroy of India, but that fell through the last minute. He ended up as keeper of the Treasury Records, which was quite a, quite a handsomely remunerated um, a job for a man like him. Uh, we didn't have a university education or indeed uh, top connections. These, these were not meritocratic times. Even the word meritocracy wasn't invented in the 1950s. It's well before the Northcote Trevelyan reform, so um, civil service jobs were, were often awarded on a nepotistic basis. So um, the Gaskell's parents had several children, um, and I think all but two of them died in infancy. And uh, Elizabeth Gaskell was only just over a year old when her mother died shortly after giving birth to a sibling. They were Irish twins, only 13 months apart, her and, and that uh, infant who I believe also died. So Elizabeth Gaskell was then brought up by her maternal aunt in Nutsford, um, that's uh, Cheshire. The Tatton constituency, as in of George Gideon Osborne, sorry, Gideon George Osborne as was, or previously, Neil Hamilton and Martin Bell. Anyhow, so, family was better off than most and she went to uh, various supporting schools, had a, a very good grounding in classical literature and that of other European languages and stayed at school to the unusually late age of 16 for a girl. Um, bearing in mind, uh, some boys never went to go to school at all in those days. Quite a few girls never went to school, more so than boys. So she was, she was relatively fortunate. And then the, the next thing was to find herself um, a husband of means because um, a lady of the bourgeoisie should not work, or well, certainly not as soon as she married. Uh, so she was fair of face, she was blessed with a cool um, yet vivacious uh, temperament, she could be tranquil when she needed to be, there was some gaiety to her as well, seemed idyllic, just about everybody liked her, always said the right thing. Um, anyway, she made, she made an advantageous alliance, as they might have said, rather um, un uh, romantically at the time, and she wed a Unitarian minister who seemed to be going somewhere in his clerical calling. So she lived in Manchester for a while, and there's a rather large house there. There's, the Unitarians were a dissenting group, as in they were Protestants who disbelieved in the notion of the Trinity. Um, so uh, that's why they got Unitarians, as opposed to Trinitarians, which is just about every other type of Christian. So there were Protestants outside the established church. There were some very wealthy families at the Martineaus and the Wedgwoods who'd made money in trade who were Unitarians. Um, and she travelled around the United Kingdom, she spent time in Edinburgh, she'd been on honeymoon in Wales. Uh, so that's why then she started writing in her 20s, publishing novels. She had several children, a couple of whom died in babyhood. So uh, she often wrote about the provincial bourgeoisie which she knew so well. Novels such as North and South, Mary Barton, um, and uh, they, they usually focus on female protagonists in novels. She published dozens of short stories, some novellas, a few poems, she's not very well regarded for her poesy, um, and uh, opinion pieces. So she was a friend of Charles Dickens, who was a great admirer of her work and published it in his um, magazine. Uh, and so she uh, looks at social divides and she wrote whereof she knew. The middle class being quite broad, very much rising, acquiring um, new rights in the 19th century, um, the franchise being broadened. But uh, where were they the middle class? Lower middle class? Surely not. Middle middle class? Aspire to be upper middle class? Could they one day crack into the upper class? Um, so these are drawing room dramas to an extent. But uh, she's surprisingly candid in what she writes about in Births Out of Wedlock and indeed having middle class characters speak in regional accents and actually spelling their pronunciation and so forth. Very learned lady. So she was lucky to marry such a broad minded man who encouraged her literary efforts. They travel around um, the German states, there was no Germany as such at the time, Belgium. And she was a voracious reader of literature and other languages. So she got herself aficionados in both sides of the Atlantic, 
and that's why a number of American novelists such as Harriet Beecher Stowe paid a visit to her in, in, in Manchester. So she died, um, unfortunately, at the fairly young age of 45. I'm not quite sure why. Not here. They were in Hampshire by that stage. And I think that's where she's buried. But um, her reputation long survived her. And she's, she's memorialised in Westminster um, Abbey at Poets' Corner. Although, as I say, her poetry is not celebrated. Um, anything else about... Oh, yes, she's the very first biography, a biographer of Charlotte Bronte. I think that's the correct pronunciation. Bronte, not Bronte. So I've tried a few Elizabeth Gaskell novels. They're not really my thing, so I, I gave up quite soon. They're quite dense, pedestrian. They require um, a lot of concentration, but that was the way some horror stories she writes about ghosts and ghouls and so forth. That is, um, that's her. So please check out my poetry channel, British Poesy, it's called. I've entitled it Poesy because that's from the Romantic Era. That's what I uh, adore the most, and indeed uh, as unique as nobody else would call their channel poesy. Right, toodaloo.